Bonfire and Bourbon is a small Swiss company focused on grooming products for men and women. Their products give a luxurious experience, accompanied by the woody scents such as firewood, cedar, and bergamot honey. And now Bonfire and Bourbon is offering an exclusive discount to my listeners. 20% off if you go to their website, bonfireandbourbon.com, and use code HOLLYBB20. That's code HOLLYBB20 at bonfireandbourbon.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Before I introduce my guests, I, of course, want to give a shout out to my sponsors. I want to give a big thanks to Rex MD for sponsoring this episode. Rex MD makes getting generic and branded Viagra super easy to deliver right to your door. It's very discreet. No office visits, no um, embarrassing waiting in the reception room. Uh, go to rexmd.com slash holly to get started with a sample pack prescription of generic Viagra today. All right. My guest today is known for her anal scenes. She also was a Twisties Treat of the Month, which is how I had the privilege of working with her. She's fairly new in the adult industry, but she's definitely making a name for herself. Uh, let's welcome Alexis Tay. Hi. Hi. <laughs> it's lovely to be here. I know. Thank you so much for coming. Um, so one of the other uh, things in, you know, the little shout out, I like to give people titles, but we were kind of laughing about it before we started because... So you won this year's AVN award for best VR sex scene. I did. But you're not sure what company it was for. And you're not sure what scene it was. And you never got your award. All three of those things. <laughs> I've done a lot of scenes. Yeah. So honestly, they I'm at the point now where they get jumbled together. Mm -hmm. If you asked me a year ago, I would have said I remember every person I work with, every scene, every day. And now it's a blur. Yeah. <laughs> so, and last year was just a complete blur. So, yeah, I won with Nathan Bronson. Um, it was a Star Wars, but it was like the Mandalorian. And okay. I looked like a cat thing. I got to wear like an oh. actual costume. It was really cool. Yeah, you were, I forget her name, but yes. she's the, so I'm not like a crazy Star Wars fanatic yeah. either, but I do watch all of the Star Wars, especially all the new Star Wars series coming out because- my husband really likes Star Wars. So like we're watching Obi-Wan Kenobi right now. Um, the Mandalorian, well, I mean, let me tell you something. I really believe the Mandalorian got me pregnant because <laughs> did you ever watch the Mandalorian? Nope. Baby Yoda. Oh, we did have Baby Yoda on set. Dude. He's so cute. But did you have you seen like Baby Yoda in the Mandalorian? No. Like, oh my God. Oh. I we were thinking <laughs> about having kids, and I remember watching that show and I was like, I feel like my ovaries are twitching. Oh. Like this makes me want to have a baby. And then I got pregnant like a month later. So we can all thank Don't baby Yoda. <laughs> yeah. Be careful, ladies. Uh. <laughs> baby Yoda might get you pregnant because yeah. that's what it did for me. It like brought up some maternal it's instinct. Adorable. I was like, I want a child. It's the eyes. But you played, um, she was a Jedi. I forget yes. her name. She was super hot. How was, so I have never shot a Star Wars themed uh, parody, but there's been so many done in our industry. And I know from talking to other performers who've done it, that like the makeup is kind of a nightmare, especially when you're playing the alien yeah. person with the, whatever <laughs> the things coming out of the head. So what was the makeup situation like? Um, honestly, I had a costume, so I had a little hat thing okay. and it was like a, the, it looked, I keep saying it's a cat because mm -hmm. it looks kind of like a cat with long ears. So yeah. basically I had that whole outfit and then uh, Connie, the makeup artist, did uh, like white on my face, like stripes. And it was actually pretty simple. It was one of the easier makeups that I've done because okay. it was a costume. Okay. So, so it wasn't like the full, because I remember no. <laughs> Digital Playground did a movie and they were really serious about that. And they like had the full body painting. And I remember talking to the girls in the scene and they were like, it was like eight hours of makeup. Cool. And then I had to do an anal scene cool. after eight hours of makeup. And for those of you who don't know, <laughs> most girls who do anal don't eat before the scene. Most of them. <laughs> so, most of them. So you can imagine yeah. what it's like sitting in eight hours of makeup. 
no food, and then doing the dialogue, grumpy. and then doing the sex scene. It's grumpy, actually grumpy. like, <laughs> what's your so you you are known for your anal scene. Yeah. So what what's your anal process, Alexis? Oh, it's changed a lot. Um, I like to say I'm like a perfectionist. So being like as clean as humanly possible is actually my biggest worry. Mm -hmm. Um, Stretching and everything, that's fun. I think either you, your body likes it or doesn't. And Mm -hmm. I'm grateful that mine does. So like Mm -hmm. the actual sex part is very easy. It is all the prep. Um, I don't fast anymore. That helps a ton on anal days because I used to be hungry. Mm -hmm. Um... Now I pretty much wake up about three hours before my scene, two hours to clean out um, on that cold bathroom floor. I try to make it nice. <laughs> so wait, are you on the bathroom floor for two hours or like do you do an enema, wait a while, expel it, like kind of walk around, mm-hmm. make sure and then like do another one or are you like on that bathroom floor for two yep, hours? I'm on that bathroom floor for like two hours. I would say like the first hour um, and I pretty much know now like I get like a one of those big things of water because mm-hmm. um, I like to use like filtered water mm-hmm. it helps a lot. Um, and I pretty much get to the point where I think I'm clean. That takes me about an hour. And then I put a butt plug in and then I'll go walk around, brush my teeth, pack my set bag. Um, and then I go back, take the butt plug out. Usually there's mm-hmm. a little something going on. Mm-hmm. So I clean some more and then I decide if I need the emodium or not. So emodium constipates you. Mm-hmm. If you guys do not know this yet. It is, can be your best friend and your worst enemy. Mm-hmm. It, um, I am very sensitive to it. I can only take like half a pill mm-hmm. and then a lot of water and I can, everything's good. I take more than that and I uh, get what I call an emodium cramp. Oh, yeah. um, so basically it feels like a runner's cramp, but right. times a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> it's so bad. Um, but in the past like year, year and a half, I've been eating before all of my anal scenes um, because it just, once you're clean, you're clean. Right. Um, I spend those two hours to make sure that I'm clean enough for a long time, like mm-hmm. for the rest of the day. So it also takes a while for food to digest yes, and get through yes. your system. So I like to eat like chicken and rice uh, before oatmeal, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it helps a lot. So I've definitely been loving anal a lot more now that I'm not so like rigid with my routine Mm -hmm. and then also just like being more I've done so many scenes that it's just like I'm just like oh fuck it like if if something happens it happens and I've realized that like the people I'm working with are so used to it so yeah it's yeah totally I mean I think if you've been working in the industry long enough you've seen I mean I've seen anal accidents and same and I'm just like, sides. it's all good, girl. Yep. Like, you know, I mean, we, you know, in the adult industry, we put a lot of demands on performers' bodies. And I think that, like, you know, if you're a seasoned um, director or crew member and, you know, if you have, like, any compassion whatsoever, like, I think you understand that, like, what we ask of you is a lot. So, yep. you know, it's understandable that, like, every once in a while something should happen. Yep. And that's okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's interesting because everybody does like figure their body out after a while. Cause everybody that I talk to about anal, everyone has a different method and they figure out what works for them after like a lot of practice. Yep. Cause it's also like just now, um, like I know it, like what I've been eating that week, mm-hmm. if it's good or bad for my stomach. So I kind of have an idea of like what's going on versus before I was not paying attention. Mm-hmm. I was just eating whatever doing whatever. And then I was making it so much harder for myself. Yeah. yeah. Do you find that you're more in tune with your body since starting in porn? For sure. Um, and I would say that I was pretty in tune with my body before because I was like an athlete growing up. Mm -hmm. So the demand on my body is pretty familiar, but not the, um, like sexual parts of my body. Like I never, knew about like vagina health because I didn't really need to think about it um I was sexually active but I wasn't super like out there and freaky so Mm -hmm. um getting in and then I'm like whoa why is my body going crazy why am I cramping why does having sex with this person hurt it's never hurt before so that was really uh interesting whenever I got in that first year Mm mm-hmm is you have to get past that first year. And in that first year, you're going to get really sick because it's like going to preschool. You have so many different germs. Right. Um, Girls are going to tell you all different types of advice, which 
might work for them, but it might not work for you. Mm -hmm. So it's just trial and error, honestly. Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. So you said that, um, you found that your body reacted differently with different people. Like, Mm -hmm. why do you think that was? And how do you work with that now? Um, I like anal because, um, my, like, I'm not very deep. Um, Mm -hmm. and you have a shallow vagina. I have a very, very shallow vagina. It can hear that all you men with like smaller penises. You are welcome. She is your girl. Yes. You are very welcomed. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but, um, yeah, so I, I can stretch. Mm-hmm. Like, I like uh, the double and all of that. But um, once it starts hitting back there, it just hurts. Mm-hmm. There, There's nothing else. I don't like that type of pain. There's good pain. There's bad pain. Um, and then back to anal. Like, when it, I just related, if I was feeling that super deep and kind of pain, it would feel good in my butt. Mm-hmm. But in my vagina, it doesn't. And then I'm also thinking, uh, like, very practical. Like, hmm, this is my, uh, like, main form of work so I should probably be very uh conscious of what's going on (laughs) so do you find then so if you get booked with somebody who is a really big dick do you opt to do you like say like I'd rather do anal with this person um no I kind of there's only one or two guys that really do it to me and they're so awesome that I I'm yeah. just like, I'm so in the moment mm-hmm. that I'm not thinking about it. And I've kind of learned to like, right after the scene, take ibuprofen, hot bath, um, you know, make sure there's no cramping going on because mm-hmm. you can get bruised. Um, mm-hmm. I've gotten bruised. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, on your insides. It's not fun. Um, so, yeah. And but- then do you like try to pick, do you try to space out your boy girl scenes? Like not do a bunch of like boy, like back to back boy girl scenes? Yeah, I guess I'm it- at mercy of the industry right now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm taking a full advantage of this time. So I'm kind of just doing everything. I know I'm working my body pretty hard, but mm-hmm. I also know my limit um, right. very well. So, yeah. So you said you were an athlete. Um, what kind of athlete were you? Uh, track and field, cross country. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, you definitely look like a runner. Yeah. You have like, that build. <laughs> don't run anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I have not run in a couple of years. <laughs> But I still like to work out. Yeah. Yeah. So So how did you get into the industry? Somebody who wasn't like super sexually active, somebody who was an athlete, like what, what was the door that opened for you? (laughs) Um, Boredom, (laughs) I think. I was 21. Uh, I turned 21 in October. I started in January. So um, I was homesick from work. I had like two weeks that I was having like bronchitis and I started thinking about like webcamming Mm because I... Like, I liked working, but I bounced around to every job. Like, I've done so many different things. Um, I started looking at camming, and I realized that I can't cam on an iPad. So somehow I got on the AVN website and a list of agents. I was like, okay, screw it. I sent some pictures, and I really didn't expect anything because I didn't know how. I thought it was, like, regular modeling, so where you just never hear anything back. And Mm. then I had people call me, uh, my first agent and then another agent, and I flew out in January. So yeah, no, of course it was, it was really, quick. really quick. Of course it was <laughs> You're beautiful. Thank like, you. Was, but yeah, but I mean, it, it was just like a very weird thing. I'm like, Oh, this is happening. Yeah. So, uh, tell us about your first scene. <laughs> so my first scene was actually girls gone wild, which is super cool because that is something that I did watch, <laughs> Wow. you know, growing up, that is one company that I absolutely did know. So Wait, are they, st- I actually didn't realize that they were, yeah. Cause I didn't think they mm-hmm. were in business anymore. Cause I remember they had like a magazine and yeah. all of that. I feel like it was like one of the last scenes because I know in the past two years they have not shot at all, but no. someone uh, about a month ago tweeted me the scene. Oh my God. <laughs> and it's so funny because I just look at it. I was so awkward. I did a girl, girl in a solo. Um, I was on my period that day and I've never douched in my life. Uh-huh. So the girl on set had to come in the bathroom with me. She is a sweetheart. <laughs> and uh, was? her name was Kelsey. Okay. I do not remember her last name. She's not in the industry anymore. Okay. So um, she helped me. She came in the bathroom and said, pour this shit out. <laughs> yeah. Do not put this inside of you. And here's a sponge. And then everyone on set called me SpongeBob for the rest of the day. 
<laughs> but that made me feel really comfortable. Okay. Um, but there were a bunch of girls on set, probably like 10. Mm-hmm. And I think that was like a really good introduction because they were all kind, uh, very helpful. Mm-hmm. It was, But Florida is so much different than Los Angeles. And that was girl, girl versus like boy, girl. And then my first boy, girl scene out here probably two weeks later. Mm-hmm. That was very interesting. Mm-hmm. I did a threesome. Four, yeah, four way actually for my technical first boy girl scene. And then I did the boy girl the next day. And it was just, I was like, cool, I like this, but I wasn't fully ready to like give myself to porn yet, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Because I was still kind of like just dipping my toes in and getting more comfortable with it. Mm-hmm. And just on the chance that, like, in three months, I was like, wow, I hate this and I want to go back. I didn't want to, like, fully, like, give it my all Mm -hmm. and then just kind of fail. I'm scared of failing. (laughs) Yeah. I guess is a good way to put it. So how was the four-way? Do you feel like it was easier because it wasn't all the pressure on you? You know what I mean? Like, you had two other girls? Yes. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. So that was better for you. Yeah. And one of the girls was like a lot more dominant, which helps. So mm-hmm. it was, yeah, I think that was like a good introduction, but it's very overwhelming because I had never had a threesome before at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I have never been with a girl before porn. Uh, oh, wow. So yeah. So all of that was new to me and I was like, this is, I'm just diving right in. So. <laughs> and it's, it's crazy too, because like shooting a girl, girl for porn and having a lesbian scene, like in, is totally different. It is not the same thing And it's at almost all. harder to shoot a girl, girl, if you don't have a ton of experience, because there's the whole, I actually shot somebody new the other day and I had to like remind her that she has to like mm-hmm. push her face against the other girl's thigh yeah. so we can see the tongue. Because if it's just straight on, all we get is the back of the head. So it can be trickier. Yeah, it really is. Um, And I still am learning to do girl, girl, because like you said, it is different than just normal sex. Yeah. (laughs) Um, There's a lot more to think of. And then just like the pacing of it is Mm -hmm. harder, depending on who I'm working with. Um, Yeah. So I'm learning that. But I'm really happy this year. I've gotten a ton of girl, girl. Yeah. And that's a really nice break on my body. And then I also get to meet other women in the industry. So Mm -hmm. because I felt like I was like being hidden away from the other girls for so long because I just did like boy girl. And then I started doing anal. So I was doing boy girl anal all the freaking time. And then now I get a little bit of everything. So it makes each month like actually really fun. Yeah. So. Were you surprised by the other girls in the industry when you came in? Because you said, like, when you did your first Mm -hmm. scene, like, the other girl was really nice to you and helped you do. She's like, were you expecting that kind of, like, fellowship in a way? Yes, because I like to research things. So I did, like, uh, like, I creeped on people's Twitters. Like, I don't really remember who, but just, like, bigger name porn stars. Um, I watched, like, YouTube videos if there were any, like, porn girls or, like, porn information out there. Um, so I kind of tried to prepare myself, but just coming from like sports, I feel like I was used to being around like a group of women. Mm -hmm. So you were a team player. Yeah. So I was just expecting that. And I'm kind of lucky because that is what happened is I didn't come in and to like a model house with like girls that were rude. Like they were all like wonderful. They all helped me. They were just the best case scenario. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that Florida and LA porn is very different. How mm. so? Florida is more fun. LA is more professional. Mm. And that is how I would put it. Is you go to Florida and you're still working, you're still shooting scenes, even for like the same companies, but um, the energy is just more like, ah, you know, if mm-hmm. like a little something weird happens, you're just like, of course, like you kind of expect mm-hmm. it. We're here. It's more. Um, you're expected to be a hundred percent on point hair done, nails done, like, you know, come to set correctly, Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, versus Florida. They kind of give you a little bit more leeway because a lot of the industry does start there. Mm -hmm. Um, so. Yeah. I think it's more known as like kind of, there's more amateur porn Mm -hmm. out there. And then, yeah, LA is definitely, it's kind of like the Hollywood versus big difference. (laughs) Yeah. 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 We're definitely. There's definitely, like, a bias against Florida porn yeah. here in L.A. Like, sometimes we'll be like, oh, 
Florida porn. Or that's Florida. We're yeah. Like that. <laughs> So yeah, there is, there's definitely, <laughs> but really we're doing the same stuff. <laughs> we really are. We really are. But you know, sometimes we just like to feel better than other people. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what have been some of your favorite scenes that you've ever done? Um, I like to do scenes with like, uh, other girls that I'm friends with. Mm-hmm. So I did a scene with Gia last year, Gia Durza and Jack Slayer for, um, my showcase. And that was just like, that's one of my favorite scenes of all time. It will always be because it was a really special day. She's a good friend of mine. And then Jax just surprised the fuck out of me. He came in with like just this like different energy. He was so, um, he was like dirty talking us so much. He doesn't normally do that. Um, he just was like really manhandling us and like took control. And it was, it was so much fun. What showcase was it? Uh, for I did a showcase for Evil Angel, okay. um, so Alexis Tay Anal Fantasy, and it's just a bunch of anal. Right. <laughs> so Sounds yeah, like it. <laughs> it was like my first DP, uh, first airtight, and then uh, those uh, boy girl anal, and then that anal scene. Can you explain so. what airtight is to those oh. those who don't know? We so. have, we do have like quite a few listeners. Yeah. Sometimes we fall into <laughs> industry speak, and I'm yeah. like, oh, I better explain that. So an airtight is when you are plugged in all the places you can be: your ass, your pussy, and your mouth, <laughs> and it is wonderful because <laughs> you can't think; you are just doing it, and it feels so good. And having like all just different, yeah. there's no control. And right. that's what's fun about it. So you kind of like like that that loss of control in Absolutely. scenes. Absolutely. That's those are the scenes that I look back to and I'm like, that was freaking fun. Mm-hmm. And then another one was I shot with Rocco um Cifredi when oh, I wow. was really new at anal. I was like two months out of an anal contract. Um I didn't know who he was. People started tweeting me. You're going to work with Rocco. You're going to work with Rocco. And I'm like, who the hell is Rocco? <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's so, like, my mom shot him for Playgirl. I mean, yeah. that's how long he's been around. <laughs> like, Rocco's a I, legend. Yeah, and I didn't know this at the time. So I was just like, uh, someone asked me, like, oh, would you like to shoot with Rocco? And I was like, yeah, sure. And I'm just thinking, you know, he's just some European guy. Right. And then um, I tell my agent, and he's like, hmm, look him up. <laughs> and I looked him up. And I was ready, <laughs> but I was not ready. Um, and I did that scene with Janice. And so she did Vag and it was really Janice uh, Griffith. Okay. Yeah. So Griffin Griffith. It's Griffith. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, and again, loss of control. He's so dominant. Yes. I didn't know what to expect, even though I had watched other things. He is different kind of with different people. So mm-hmm. There was a point in the scene where he laid on the floor and like let us smack him with our feet, shove our feet in his mouth. Like it was, it was just fun. I've never done that. He, yeah, yeah it was like two hours that we shot and wow. it was just fun. That's the only way to describe it. It's just fun. It's so interesting. So it's kind of like he sw- switched from like, yes, I wouldn't say submissive. I don't ever see Do- Rocco is submissive, but like, but for him. Yeah. Yeah. And it was really cool because I still never had another guy do that. Yeah. So. You don't do like foot fetish stuff. Oh, I do. But okay. not like you're in the heat of the scene. The guy lays down his like foot feet, yeah. feet all over me. Just smack me. Yeah. That would be cool. I would be down for that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, time. that's definitely like a, different takeaway from mm-hmm. the usual like okay missionary cowgirl yeah. versus cowgirl. i don't think we did one normal position yeah <laughs> that's probably why he's like still mm-hmm. so successful i was very surprised mostly by how large he was as mm. a person like he mm-hmm. his penis size is big but he is a big man mm-hmm. and i remember being in doggy and thinking wow he's really uh big like he's large like he's heavy this is a lot of weight on top of me mm-hmm. and i'd never felt that before so Interesting. Yeah, Rocco's Rocco's a legend. I've been trying to get him on this podcast. The <laughs> motherfucker isn't responding to my DMs. Rocco. He's busy. <laughs> I know he's busy. He's All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and then we're going to come back and learn so much more about Alexis. So stick around. We'll be right back. Bonfire and Bourbon is a small Swiss company focused on grooming products for men and women. Born and bred in Lausanne, Switzerland, they create products in small, elaborate batches that focus on efficacy without compromising on quality or purity of ingredients. 
Their products give a luxurious experience, accompanied by the woody scents such as firewood, cedar, and bergamot honey. They have two types of beard and face wash, a Manuka honey and aloe vera formula that is effective on rough beards but gentle on the skin, or try their face and beard wash with marilla oil and ginger, rich in antioxidants that provides a deep but moisturizing clean. Their other products include an all-natural CBD booster for stressed out skin, an anti-aging serum, and for the men, a beard balm that will style your beard while leaving it feeling soft. And now Bonfire and Bourbon is offering an exclusive discount to my listeners, 20% off if you go to their website, bonfireandbourbon.com and use code HOLLYBB20. They ship anywhere in the world, so make sure you treat yourself to their amazing products. That's code HOLLYBB20 at bonfireandbourbon.com. All right, so we are back. So um, I once read an interview where you talked about attending the 2019 ABN Awards, mm-hmm. the one like – actually, no, that the wasn't before one. the – No. That 2020 was the last one yeah. because it was right before, mm-hmm. yeah, COVID shut everything down. Um and it, that was before you even had a video out. So mm-hmm. how does it feel to go from that to an award winner in just three years? It's really cool. It's also cool. I've still never been to an AVN. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Isn't that funny? Um, I've been to the virtual ones, so that's awesome. I actually kind of like those. Cause... Do you think you'll go technically next year? Um, it depends on uh, like what's going on in the world health-wise. Mm-hmm. I have to be pretty uh, conscious of that, so... Mm-hmm. I'm still, I'm a little bit afraid of germs, not going to lie. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But it was just kind of weird because I walked into that uh, with no idea. And I feel like that's how I kind of go into every award season now is like, Mm -hmm. I don't expect anything. I don't really know what's going to happen. I'm just like, cool, I got nominated for this and or I won that. And that's just like, I I see it as like a bonus, Mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. But not really like a motivator. Yeah. So, so so winning an award is not like the end all and be all for you. No, no, no. So you're not one of those girls who cries when she doesn't win an ABN no, award, no. which happens every year. It actually makes me feel really sad yeah. because every year when there's the AVNs, like there are girls who are tweeting about like how much they want to win yeah. something and then they don't win and then they feel really sad about it. And I'm always able to come in and say, it's okay. I've been in the industry for 24 years and I've never won an award either. So it's all right. Yep. Like, and I'm still here. And I kind of love hearing that. And that's definitely what has made me have the mindset I do is just looking at other women that I look up to Mm -hmm. that have like never won Mm -hmm. anything, but they are fantastic. So I'm like, oh, she's been in seven, eight years. She's killing it. She's getting a bunch of bookings, continuing like building our career you don't need the award but it is cool um, yeah. yeah it's nice to have that recognition but it's yeah. definitely I mean I think just as a society we put so much weight on accolades yeah. such as that when in the end your your award is being able to support yourself mm-hmm. support and, your family yeah exactly <laughs> like even have the ability to like show up to work mm-hmm. so. how has being in porn changed your life like financially mentally like all of those things <laughs> um in every single way I really needed a job that allowed me to kind of uh work with like my health mm-hmm. uh, which is kind of why I was like just cycling through jobs before because it would be like every few months I would have to take a week or two off because like digestive issues and mouth issues and just stuff like that and then the whole mental health side of it is I have bad days <laughs> you know, yeah. I have bad weeks, I have bad months. And this job kind of allows me to take the time when I need it and be there when I need to be there. Mm-hmm. But also it's a lot easier for me to like, I'm in a bad mood and then get to set and change my mood. Mm. And I was never able to do that before. So why do you think that is? Do you think it's like the people that you work mm-hmm. with? Yep. Yep. I think I just like come in and I'm like, oh, well, they're all pretty happy. So, you know, why am I going to be the dark cloud over the day? And then if the people are not happy, then I try to just like be super happy Mm -hmm. because I would like to have a good day. Yeah. (laughs) It's hard to being in front of the camera and trying to put on Mm -hmm. that, you know, because if you work like at a grocery store, if you're having a bad day, like you can go and you can ring up people with a glum face and like, whatever, you're not going to get fired. But 
going to set and having to be in front of the camera, like you have to pull yourself out of whatever funk you're in, especially if you've got a scene where you got to do like dialogue or something like that. And that is really hard. Yep. I am learning that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've been getting a lot more scripts this year, so I am grateful for that because I never got that before. That was actually my big goal this year mm-hmm. was to like be in a feature. So yeah. How, so you do like doing dialogue. Yeah. It's and, completely different for me. And how do you like, how's the acting for you? I'm very hard on myself. Mm -hmm. So the less I'm in my head, the better I am. Mm -hmm. And I just have to remember that whenever I'm like starting to get anxious and overthink, like, this is stupid. Why am I saying this? (laughs) And there's a lot of stupid word scripts out there. There's so much stupid things that you have to say, but (laughs) you're a character, you know, at the end of the day. So yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I've definitely been like, okay, well, they've seen me do insane things they've seen ev- inside of me so yeah. like I'm not embarrassed anymore right <laughs> by anything. it's hard though like I mean just speaking from personal experience mm-hmm. I'm a terrible actress and I'm also really bad at remembering lines even if I've written the script myself which has happened several <laughs> times like I've put myself in a movie as an extra because I didn't have the budget yeah. to hire one so I was just like fuck it I'll just do I'll it do walk by. <laughs> and like or like I'll give myself a few I yeah. never give myself a big role because like god knows like I'm so bad at it but like I'll give myself a few lines and even <laughs> <laughs> like I, I can't remember the lines that I wrote it's, it's and so I'm always thinking about you know how great it, it like how appreciative I am of the performers who can come to set and like do the lines yep. and do the acting because like I cannot do it. Yep. And I'm actually better at remembering like longer scripts than if it's like short little thing because I overthink it and mm. then I just keep it gets so jumbled in my brain that I'm just like oh, I only have three lines to say but what are they? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And then I, whenever I have like a whole script I know the other person's line so I know exactly what's going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot more context. Context helps so much. Yeah. <laughs> with the, the acting. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. That's interesting that like longer <laughs> scripts is easier for you. Yeah. um has the stigma of being a porn star affected your life in any way um I think more personally uh my family is cool with it my friends are cool with it it wasn't really a surprise to my mom she said no really Uh, yeah how did she take it like how did you tell her okay so I kind of like ran away (laughs) I didn't run away but I left Mm -hmm. um I left my car I was living with my dad at the time um and I just left because mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I could. And about two, three weeks in, I remember I was shooting a scene and my mom started blowing up my phone. And I was like, yeah, mom. And I put her and my father in a group message on Facebook and told them. <laughs> wow. Were they together or separate? They're separate. They're separate. Yeah. Okay. So I put them in a group memo and yeah. And they took it okay? Um. I think they took it more as like, my mom wanted to talk to me on the phone. Mm -hmm. She said, someone has your phone. You're being sex trafficked. I know that they got you. I'm like, mom, no. And mind you, my dad knows where I'm at because he pays for my phone and Mm -hmm. he can track me still to this day. It makes me feel safe. Mm -hmm. So he did not know where I was at. He just didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But he's more like, he's more chill. My mom was a mom. And she was very, very concerned. She's like, I need to talk to you. And as soon as she talked to me, she was like, okay, I just love you, Tay. I want to make sure you're okay. And pretty much that's it. Wow. She has pictures of me from, like, shoots hanging up on her wall. Oh, uh, that's really sweet. Yeah, she tells everyone exactly what I do. Interesting. She's really, yeah, like, she's really proud of it. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, you've made, like, a name for yourself, and you're doing really well. So I think it's interesting that her first thought was that you were sex trafficked, and Mm -hmm. I think that that's such a knee-jerk reaction for so many people who don't understand the porn industry because they really believe that everybody is, like, forced. Like, nobody could possibly want to join the porn industry of their own accord. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So did you have a hard time? Like, how did you convince her that that wasn't the case? Well, she's just a worrier. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she necessarily was, like – really like oh everyone in porn is sex trafficked i think she just was like my daughter got kidnapped she was taken like right she worst was case just, scenario yes she's yeah. just worst case scenario yeah so <laughs> that makes sense well that's great that um 
that, that you have a good relationship with your mm-hmm. parents. So, so then how has, so you said that your friends are cool with it, mm-hmm. your family's cool with it. So has it affected you in other ways? Like is dating hard for you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, made kind of like a promise to myself that I wasn't going to date until I got out of the industry or just more towards the end of my career. Mm -hmm. Um, because it's really hard for me to balance life and work. I am a total workaholic. I am very aware of this. I'm working on it. Um, so being with someone in porn was never really ideal for me because I am a jealous person. Mm -hmm. Personally, I know this. I can't see somebody that I love and care about having sex on Twitter. Mm. It would honestly bother me. Mm. Um, well, at least you're honest with yourself. About yeah, that. like it, it, it would even like having crushes on guys in the industry. And then I see them I'm like, hmm, and I don't want to be that person. So um, I have been with someone kind of in the industry, but like not necessarily a performer. So someone who gets it. So and like a, maybe someone who works behind the scenes. Yeah, okay. yeah, kind of. And that was a, a good experience. Um, and then after that, I am now with someone who's not in porn. Mm -hmm. And that is a journey and it's really fun, but it's also really, uh, it's hard because there's not like advice out there. I can't Mm -hmm. just like type in like how to convince my boyfriend that porn is not this or that, or like, Mm -hmm. uh, how do I make my boyfriend not feel this way? Mm -hmm. Because like I just said, I feel jealous when I see someone that I care for. Right being intimate with another, even if I know that it's porn. Right. And that it's uh, a lot of times just performance. I still, so it's, we're navigating it. Yeah. Um, and he is like a gem. Cause I don't think many other people would be able to like wrap their head around it. And then not even, he just likes me for me. His parents know they're absolutely okay with it. Um, I, I did get the comment, uh, if I didn't know, I wouldn't know she did porn, which I thought was funny because yeah. I'm like, well, what do people think porn stars are like? I mean, <laughs> we know. Wild. You know? Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a very stereotypical yeah. porn star mm-hmm. idea of a porn star, which to be fair, some of Sometimes. them definitely fall into. Yeah. But I think that we also, you know, especially now that it's become more open and there's more people coming mm-hmm. into the industry. And even though the stigma is definitely there, it's a little, I think it's a little bit less. Yeah. So you're seeing like all kinds of girls who don't look like they do porn yeah. in yeah. porn. So I got that comment, but it was at least, uh, I took that as kind of like, okay. Mm-hmm. And like, even in the future, they will probably have a different idea about anything. But mm-hmm. yeah. So how does he handle you doing scenes? Like, do you tell him you're going to go do a scene? Mm-hmm. Does he want to hear about it? Does he not want to hear about it? Like, do you, like, how do you guys have that conversation? Learning what to tell and what not to tell has probably been one of the biggest things that I've learned. Mm. Um, I come home every day and talk about my day. I say, this happened, that happened. If something funny on set happens, he's the first one that knows. Mm -hmm. Something bad happens, he's the first one that knows. Um, He knows, like, when I'm hurting. He, it's, like, he's just understanding. So it is very easy. But I'm not going to come home and be like, I just got fucked by six dicks in my ass and pussy. It felt so like, no, yeah. I'm going to tweet that. Yeah. But like, <laughs> right. And then, uh, th- that's the other thing is social media is that I'm on social media and I may be saying things that he's like, what the hell? Right. And you can't look at that because you have a different side of me. You have like the, you have the most intimate parts of me, not my, uh, public face. You yeah. Know? So, and I think the longer that we've been in a relationship, that is, just become like very easy i think you just said something that's pretty significant there where you said that he has the most intimate side of you when one would think that having sex with people like for money is an intimate thing that you're exploiting but you're right because intimacy is not just about like penises going in vagina intimacy is about like that human connection which makes sense that you would share only with like the man you've chosen to be with Yeah, so. like it's, yeah, someone like to take care of me. It's really cool. And yeah. Also, I'm very much someone that I like to take care of others. I like to have um, family and friends like around me. I like to know that everyone's okay. So mm-hmm. I just like family, I guess would be a good way to put it. So 
it's nice that I've been like able to build a little family here Mm -hmm. and I don't really feel that lonely, but we are from the same hometown. So I did move all the way across the country just to find somebody from my hometown. That's so funny. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. That's funny. (laughs) Do you want to have a family when you're older? Oh my gosh. That's honestly, that is, I always say that is actually the only thing I want to do in life. That is Mm -hmm. always my end goal. Everything is a means to an end. I, I never, since I was a child, I've always wanted to have a child. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's really what I'm looking forward to in life. Mm-hmm. Um, everything else is cool, but like I want to yeah. be a mom. I want to have a family. Are you worried about like having kids and like how to handle like your how they would handle your career? No, because I think by the time that they're old enough to even know that it's going to be a lot more uh, destigmatized. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so because it already is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And there's always going to be something if at this point in time, like if your parent is like a politician, kids are going to say stuff to you. So Mm -hmm. it's like, is, hey, your mom's on OnlyFans. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I don't know. It's uh, I mean, I I can tell you if um, if there's any reassurance, because I don't know if you know, but I grew up like my mom wasn't a porn star, but she was a porn director and they worked in my parents worked in the adult industry. And so people always ask me like, what was that like? And was it weird? And like, you know, were you ashamed of what your parents did for a living? And I think it's all about how you raise your child. My parents raised me with like so much love and care Mm -hmm. and they were never secretive about what they did. Mm -hmm. They never were ashamed. Like Mm -hmm. you as a child, you learn what your parents teach you. Right. Mm -hmm. So if your parents don't teach you that Mm -hmm. sex is shameful and dirty and disgusting, you're not going to grow up that way. I think the people who like, look at, you know, sex workers who have children and think like, oh, how could you do that? Yeah. Or like your child's going to be so yeah. ashamed are people who they themselves grew up with a ton of shame around yep. sex, which they most likely learned from their parents. Which they most likely still have. Right. Exactly. Well, they do still have. Yeah. And they're taking it, you know, they're, they're pushing that on on you. Yeah. You know, I will say there was, so, um, my mom, you know, has been in the industry for a long time and a year before I was born, she wrote this book called Suze, which was, um, like about her like exploits at the Playboy mansion mm-hmm. and like her work when she worked at Hustler and like all cool the song. people she had sex with, <laughs> like all this crazy shit. That's Cause cool. my parents, my parents were swingers, right? Oh so gosh. like they, they did all kinds of, all yeah. kinds of stuff. Yeah. So she wrote this very salacious book <laughs> and she went on this press tour and I, I found a lot of these old interviews and I was watching them and I watched one in particular, uh, I think it was a current affair out of Australia and the journalists, and this is the seventies, mind you, right? So there was like a lot, like you can imagine what it was like back then yeah. and like the sexism and that kind of stuff. And the journalist said to my mom in this very accusatory tone, like, so, you know, what are your, what are your grandchildren going to think about you? You know, what are your children going to think about you? Um, when, cause he asked her first, he said, mm-hmm. do you want to be a mother? And she said, of course, I'd love to be a mother. And he said, well, what kind of morals are you going to teach your children? You know, this is what you do for a living. You do, you write this salacious yeah. book, you have sex with all of these people. Um, you know, you shoot porn, like what, what are your children going to think of you and how are you going to raise them? And she said, well, I'll, I'll raise my children. Like, you know, anybody else would, I'll teach them, you know, morals and mm-hmm. compassion, like, mm-hmm. sorry, not morals. It's probably like the wrong word to use, but you know, like compassion Mm -hmm. and, and honesty and like all the things that, you know, I think are important. Um, and, and then he said, well, what do you think, you know, your grandchildren are going to think about you, you know, when they read this book? And she said, and it it just rings so true now. She said, my grandchildren aren't going to give a damn about my book. They're going to be like, oh, I'm glad that grandmother had such a good time when she was young and hot and like. You know, like good for her. It's gonna be cool. Yeah. <laughs> like and, and she also said, she said, and I think too, by the time I have grandchildren, we as a society aren't gonna look at mm-hmm. um sex the way that we do now, yep. with the kind of narrow viewpoint that you clearly yep. are demonstrating at this yep. moment. And it was just such a I don't know, I just feel like that was th- that when I saw her say that, I was like, wow. Mm-hmm. So true and so ahead of her time. And then literally, and I'm the oldest child, literally like less than a year later, she gave birth to me. So she got pregnant with me right after that. Like she went home and was like, actually? Yeah, Yeah, right? (laughs) But it's just interesting because, you know, I grew up like I'm super Mm -hmm. close to my family. Mm -hmm. Um, I have two siblings. We're 
neither of them work in the adult industry. We're all very close. None of us are ashamed of our Mm -hmm. parents and what they did for a living. Um, and you know, she has a granddaughter now, my, my daughter who, you know, will love her for just Mm -hmm. being who she is. So I don't know. Sometimes I just like to tell people that story who are thinking of having a family just to like, let you know from somebody who grew up around the industry (laughs) that like, you won't be messed up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to mess the kid up yeah. simply because of my job. Maybe in other ways. Yeah. But, there's so many other ways. To f- not because of what I do. <laughs> there's so many other ways yeah. to fuck your kid up. <laughs> yeah. And this is not it. Trust me. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, exactly. Because, you know, my mother is not perfect. Yeah, no one is. That, you know, she did <laughs> as a mother that uh, I'm like, no. but it has nothing to do with porn. Yeah. But I think I was raised in a very uh, like open household. My mom knew I was like gay before I did Mm -hmm. she said I always thought you're gonna come home with a girl (laughs) Mm because I was just so uninterested in that Mm -hmm. I had my group of friends I just loved it um and yeah she's super creative she's just crafty and all of that stuff so I think that's why she's so okay with it because it's just it's like kind of familiar to her in a way Mm -hmm. because it's just more art (laughs) yeah I mean it is right it is a form of art yeah for sure so she can understand why I like to do it yeah You've also uh, talked in the past about like mental health and how important Mm -hmm. it is. So how do you take care of your mental health in this world that we live in? (laughs) First and foremost, therapy and medication. (laughs) Um, I had a lot of struggles when I was younger with it, which I talked about a little bit earlier, which kind of led me to be here. Mm -hmm. Um, And that led me to be really against medication, like absolutely 100% against it. I don't need it. I won't take it. Everything all natural. And that was pretty good for me for a while. And then um, like March 2021, I'd been having uh, just like some like vagina issues, like um, normal girl stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kept going into my gyno and he's like, you're really stressed. How about we try some Wellbutrin? And I was, nope, 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 I'm not going to take it. And the person I was with at the time was like, why don't you just fill the script? Try it once. If you absolutely hate it, that's okay, but you should try it. And that is, it's literally changed my life. Mm -hmm. Um, I am productive. (laughs) I I don't have mood swings as much. Um, I'm able to live. (laughs) Um, And that's really nice. I don't feel as ashamed of like, being on medication anymore as I did when I was younger mm-hmm. but um I still like uh natural things like I have to be outside I realize that I get super super depressed when I haven't been out in nature for a while that's mm-hmm. very um close to me I grew up in Pennsylvania I grew up in the woods in the rivers and the creeks so uh the city is concrete <laughs> and it's not good for your mental health so just kind of like reconnecting with nature um I'm really really good at self-care mm-hmm. <laughs> We'll say that. Um, what does like self care mean for you? Um, well, everything, just kind of even eating better things is self care because I could order Taco Bell or I could make myself something and then be- feel good, feel accomplished. Um, just physical things, taking care of my physical health helps my mental health. It's all linked mm-hmm. together. That's a big thing. Yeah. Do you still um, exercise? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a gym girl yeah (laughs) yeah I really love the gym I don't run anymore uh but yeah I like yoga a lot and I like to lift so yeah I find for me I don't I don't take medication actually I have like the opposite thing because um I was an alcoholic for so many years I'm the kind of person who as long as I don't take something I'm okay Mm -hmm. but if I take something that alters my mood you know pot Mm -hmm. alcohol any kind of like drugs narcos um that's when I have a problem. But if I don't take anything, I'm generally okay. And of course, like I have mood swings. I have bad days. I get depressed like everybody else in life. (laughs) But yeah, for me, exercise is something that Mm -hmm. I've learned is absolutely essential. It's, it's like (laughs) non-negotiable, right? honestly, because I noticed like looking back, oh, the times that I get super down and depressed, I am not working out. I'm not going outside. I am going to work and coming home, Mm -hmm. going to work and coming home. And I've kind of learned that some days after work, even if I'm really, really tired to like fight that and just do something for myself, uh, even if it's play video games, like play Sims, 
Um, that's still an hour that I had to myself of doing something pleasurable just for me, not for the internet, not for money, not just for me. So Mm -hmm. I think that is probably the most important thing. Yeah. I mean, do you find in this like social media obsessed world that we live in, especially for someone like you who is, I mean, like, I think we could say you're an influencer, right? And I mean, like anybody yeah. of us who like, <laughs> yeah, we all, we all are influencers yeah, yeah. online. Yeah. Um, you know, people are interested in what happens mm-hmm. in our lives. They follow us on social mm-hmm. media to learn more about us. Mm-hmm. Do you find like you always have to, you feel like you should be like, oh, I should be getting this on Instagram or I should be filming this for OnlyFans or something like that. Like, do you have a hard time separating that personal time from like personal time that you're sharing with the world if that yeah. makes sense yeah um definitely the only fans thing a hundred percent I used to think that because now I'm in a relationship I would be hooking up with someone I'm like why am I not recording this this is crazy <laughs> I'm why am I doing this for free right. <laughs> I'm like I don't even really like this person like I'm just trying to have fun like but yeah. I could have fun and record it but then like when it comes to friends I'm pretty pri I'm like very open but very private. Like Mm -hmm. people know who my friends are, but I'm not someone that's just like pictures all the time. We have to like tweet at each other and like Mm -hmm. that's my girl. Like I like to keep that a little bit more separate. And I think that's why I still have like the same friends from when I started. Yeah. Is because of like we're not just social media friends. We don't just look good together. We're we are friends. Right. And that's that. So but I overshare on social media. Which I think it hurt me in the beginning because I just I have a lot of opinions. So mm-hmm. obviously people don't agree with everything that everybody says. That's okay. Right. Um, I put my foot in my mouth more times than I can count. Yeah. <laughs> but um that also now I'm like three and a half years in, th- my fans, they know me. Mm-hmm. Like they know <laughs> when I'm having a bad day. They know when I'm joking, which is like the funniest thing is like I'll get a new follower and I'll joke back with someone that I've been uh, like interacting with for a couple years and they're like oh my gosh don't talk to her like that and I have to be like no 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 we're just joking yeah and I it's, think it's really cool that I can have that interaction like with people and there are people from three and a half years ago that are still here talking to me so, that, so like fans from three and a half years mm-hmm. ago that's yep. amazing and they yep. were just like following you the yep. whole time that's really cool yeah I feel really lucky in that way yeah I have like little buddies everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I know. I have some of those too, yeah. like guys who've been like yeah. who support me on all my platforms mm-hmm. and yeah. have been following me for a long time. And you, you always yeah. appreciate because they, they like kind of pick up on things. They'll kind of mm-hmm. know when you're going through it or mm-hmm. whatever. Like, hey, I've been seeing you tweet. How are you doing? Have a good day. Yeah, and just little stuff like that. It's nice to know that there are people out there who don't necessarily really know you who like care about yep. how you're doing. Yep. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a really cool feeling. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Alexis, for coming on. It was such a pleasure to get down, thank sit down you with for you. Me. Um, can you well. let everybody know where they can mm-hmm. find you online? You can find all of my links at alexistay.com, just to make it easier. <laughs> just go on there and click whatever you want. <laughs> Perfect. Mm-hmm. And you guys can follow me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. Um, <laughs> I would promote my TikTok, but by the time this comes out, I have yep. a feeling I'm going to be deleted because they literally, I've actually been banned from posting for a few days and they're just like, we're one more community guidelines violation and we're going to fucking delete you. Keep and I'm like, forever. how can I not violate your guidelines? Like you hate everything that I do. I bleep out words. <laughs> I like, I'm very careful about what I post on there. There's no like boobs or nudity but tiktok (laughs) hates me so anyways um yeah so maybe i won't promote my tiktok today but if it's still out there it's uh holly randall (laughs) unfiltered (laughs) i started a new one called holly randall podcast which i haven't posted on yet so i don't know maybe i'll start building that one up but otherwise (laughs) probably the best place to um support me would be at my Patreon, of course, where you can watch interviews like this live. And that is patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you, you, Alexis, for your time. And I will see all of you guys next week. Bye.